Hello and welcome to another RPG update. In this update we're going to be talking about the questing system and some UI assets that we are going to be using hopefully in the part two course. So first of all the questing system is going to be a revamp of what Ben has already done so I'll show you what the differences are if you've seen that otherwise you'll just get to see the questing system and the menu system is going to be me putting in a few assets or showing you how I've put in a few assets rather. So let's dive right into the questing system which I think is the biggest part of this. Okay so what has happened? What's needed to change? Previously in Ben's questing system we had under here a bunch of, well here's a missing prefab, but we had here, sorry, the quests were as game objects. I haven't removed them yet, but they had mono behaviors on them over here in the inspector. And what would happen is that your quest givers, so these down here were the quest givers, and this dude in particular named Kill gives a quest to kill the uh, purple dude. And so the voice would have referenced this game object in the scene and it would have used that as a unique reference to switch on and switch off the quest, make it active and inactive. The only problem with that is that the game objects exist within one scene. So if you want to do multi-scene quests, that makes it impossible. So let me show you what we've got now. If I go ahead and hit play, then I have actually got a scene active already. So that's showing you uh, a scene, a quest active already, and that's showing you that quests now persist uh, with the saving system. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that save so that we don't have any active quests, we don't have anything starting off with. So no active quests, and if I go over to this particular quest giver dude and start a conversation with him, this is the dialogue system that is still very rudimentary in terms of UI, but is quite functional. Uh, we're going to go ahead and accept this quest, and you see it shows up in our very rudimentary quest list. Now, to complete this quest I have to go over into another world, so I've got this little cave portal if I go into that, it loads up a different scene. This is a totally different scene. And I need to go and kill this dude who's patrolling around here. So let's go ahead and attack him. Attack, attack, attack. And what should happen is when that's finished, my quest has been completed and I get my reward coin totting up on the right over here. So that shows you some multi-scene questing. And if I go ahead and save, and if I went ahead and loaded up Village 2 again, then we would be back to the same state and hopefully I'm not sure whether the coin persists yet I think I haven't got it to the stage where the coin actually persists uh, but if I go ahead and hit play in here in village 2 hopefully it should load me up in the same place actually this we'll we'll leave that because the saving system is a different thing but I want to show you how this is working because basically what we've got now is our quests are part of a scriptable object so they exist outside of the scene, which means that we can reference them from multiple scenes. In fact, what we've got is one scriptable object for the entire list of quests in the game. So you see this thing here is a serializable field of type quest. The quest itself is just a serializable class, not even a monobehavioral scriptable object. And it is has a unique name, a display name, and a reward coin to give for that quest. So why a list of scriptable objects? That is a very, very good question, because you might think, why not have a scriptable object per quest? The problem is, a scriptable object is an asset. So what do I mean by that? Because it's an asset, it means that Unity will only bundle it into your project if it has been referenced from this scene. So it's not a given that in any given scene you'll be able to reference a scriptable object if you haven't had it referenced off something. So what I was thinking of doing is having the voice script reference that scriptable object directly, but that doesn't work particularly well. Okay, so let's go and see again what it is that we are doing. So instead what we've got is this unique string name. So the unique name is a unique name, and if I go and have a look at our quests, so I find my quest system, where is this quest down here, this is a quest list, and you can see there's just this array of quests, and there's two of them at the moment, there's kill and escort, and the unique name is, has to be unique, so there's kill, escort, and then you've got display name, which is what's actually shown in the quest list, and how much reward coin to give, and so on. So that's the basic idea of that questing system, and it has been constrained based on the fact that we want to be able to reference this quest list from the scene and for that to bring in all the quests so we can have access to all the quests. 
So the only downside there is now we have to use string references to reference quests rather than dragging in a scriptable object rather than dragging in a game object. But I think that is something that we could either manage with an editor script or just lump it and be happy. So just to show you the full the full system, how it works. If I go up to a quest giver, this kill guy, and go to his voice script, you can see there's a quest ID, which is the quest he's going to activate. And then what happens is that calls up to the add quest call here on the journal, the journal being the thing that shows up on the left here. So it adds that quest to the active list of quests. And similarly, when you kill the guy that you need to kill, there is an object on him that calls the complete quest for the same quest ID. Uh, and you can do like get a quest by quest ID here on the journal as well, which is what we actually do. If we look at the voice script, uh, then uh, somewhere here we've got the triggering, so trigger quest, quest if any. It finds the journal, it gets the quest by the quest ID, by the string, and then it will add the quest to the journal fairly straightforwardly. And the journal just updates itself, shows the text, but also now has the responsibility of being able to save itself. So it's got these two methods for capturing its state into a dictionary and restoring its state from a dictionary. And that is why we can now use it between scenes and we can use it between saves because that journal has now got a way of saving the list of active quests. And that's the important thing. So that is the update to the questing system that I've put together. Now, menu system is also very interesting. What I've done here for the menu system, let me just show you. Go ahead and hit play. Then if I hit escape, this is the new menu, which obviously looks a lot nicer than what we've had previously. And this is because we've brought in a whole lot of assets, which we'll hopefully be able to include in the course. But one thing I've also done here, because I wasn't too happy with just one single prefab for the whole menu system, I decided that I would move the menu into a separate scene and then load it additively. So if I go to the camera UI, I've got this UI scene. And if I load that up, you can see it's just a bunch of prefabs here. In fact, some of them aren't even prefabbed yet. And it means that you can zoom in and in this scene, it's just a 2D scene and you can edit your UI. So how does that come into the main script? I'm glad you asked because I was going to show you into the main scenes, what I mean. Uh, we have here a UI loader script and I've currently put this on the player. It doesn't really matter. It needs to be in the scene. That's the main thing. And then what happens is on awake, we just load that scene. But the important thing is we're loading it additively. So if the scene isn't loaded as well, we check first whether the scene's loaded. And if it's already been loaded additively, we don't have to do this. So what is additive loading? Let me show you. If we go over to one of our villages, I'll go for the village three. You can actually do additive loading in the editor. So I can go to the camera UI, right click the scene and click open scene additive. And that adds in this scene as well. So you've got two scenes loaded at the same time and you can load and unload them. Like so I can unload it or I can even remove the scene from the hierarchy. So what happens is when I hit play on a wake, there's a script on player that goes and loads that scene additively. So you can see that this, the UI has been added in after the fact. So that's just nice because it means that you don't have to have too much stuff going on in one scene. It means that when you're editing UI, you could actually unload the, or, or just edit this UI scene directly, or you can just unload the village scene to save on resources on your machine. If your machine's running a bit slow, you can separate things out into separate scenes. It's quite cool. And otherwise, we have gone ahead and in this UI scene, I've gone ahead and updated the pause menu, particularly this main menu, to use a bunch of different assets. So we've just, I'll tell you more about it in detail, but there are different assets here. We've got a title, which is got this image here, and that image looks like this. There's all these different assets that we will be able to include. And let me just show you some of the demos from their demo scene of what should be achievable. Okay. So this is the kind of stuff, it's not actually done using Unity UI, it's still done in Photoshop, uh, as in assembled in Photoshop. You've got the raw elements, however. So we should be able to assemble nice inventory screens that look like this. As you can see, I've already done a menu screen that looks somewhat like this. 
and everything should be very, very cool. We might even update our existing UI to use these nice orbs and stuff like that. So that is what's coming up in part two. I hope you are as excited as I am about this. Uh, very, very cool. I, I like the questing system stuff. I'm enjoying doing this so much. Go ahead and if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, give it a thumbs down, obviously. Subscribe if you want to see more. But most importantly, I'd like to hear what you think of this video. So please go and leave me a comment down below and tell me what you thought, tell me what you're looking forward to, what you think of the questing system, and if, you're, if you like the look of the assets, that would be really cool to know what you think of those. I'll leave a link to the asset pack in the description if you're really raring to go and you want to get hold of that asset pack for yourself. Okay, I'll see you next time in the next update.